It's a perfect autumn afternoon in East Rutherford, New Jersey. No rain, 55. Steelers have won the toss. They've deferred. The Jets will receive to the sideline. The third member of our crew is Otis Livingston. Jet fans out there, and they're frustrated with the job that their general manager, John Itzik, has done. So much so that a group rented a plane that flew the message, fire John Itzik, over the Jets' practice on Wednesday. Now, head coach Rex Ryan said it was inappropriate. It's not one man's fault. Some of the Jet players said it was a waste of good fuel. Well, let's face it, they can make their own banner headlines with a solid performance today against Pittsburgh. Otis, thank you. Rich, I'm sure you've been in situations where the coach and the general manager has been under great scrutiny as they are here in New York. No question, Kevin. And just in visiting with some of the players on Friday, you get the sense that they feel that they've let Rex Ryan down. They've got great admiration and respect for the job that he has done. The players have to play better. Sweezum kicks off. This is Percy Harvin, who is hit hard, taken down. Spence gets him. He's going to start at linebacker today. It's an 18-yard return, which takes us to Michael Vick, who took over for Geno Smith a couple weeks ago. And uh, all that they've talked about in the meetings last night with the Pittsburgh Steelers, we've got to be able to contain Michael Vick. That's a concern for this Pittsburgh defense. Even at 34 years of age, he's still very talented when he gets outside the pocket. The key today for Pittsburgh, set the edge and force this guy to function as a pocket passer. We have the first and ten. The end around Harvin he's chased by Moat dragged down near the 35 he picks up on the play about 12 with the first down let's go to the offense on the line Nick Mangold will anchor with the center position and we just saw Percy Harvin he'll do a lot of things at 225 total yards against the Kansas City Chiefs a week ago in Arrowhead so Harvin already heard from they told us they're going to use them in a lot of different ways. First and ten. The fake to Johnson, and then the screen pass. Mangold with the block, and they go outside to Brickishaw. Ferguson with the block. They're out to the 48. They pick up 13. Down he goes. Another first down. The Pittsburgh D. It's a 34 defensive course with Pittsburgh and Steve McClendon is on the nose. Worlds and Timmons headliners here in the linebacking core. Spence replaces Shazier and with Polamalu out with a sprained left knee Will Allen will start at the strong safety today it's a first and ten what is it? Ivory who is hit by Timmons and also Will Allen on the play picks up six he's to the 46 yard line of Pittsburgh and Kevin if I were calling plays today for the Jets I'd make sure that Chris Ivory has at least 20 carries a game and then when he needs a blow, I'd bring in Chris Johnson, followed closely by Bilal Powell. I mean, I'd wear out this trio of backs. That's, you, know, you look at them right now, that's their best chance of winning when you consider the quarterback situation. I think it really boils down to who do you trust more. And if I'm Marty Morningwig, I'm going to make sure these backs get their touches early. Little second down and four here for Vick, and he's right on the screws to about the 38-yard line, and a gang tackle across the way on Harvin. He was... Hit by a host of players, including Robert Golden and Gay. It's a gain of nine. Another first down on this jet drive. Well, look how soft they're playing with, with Percy Harvin. Certainly you respect his speed, his straight line speed, and, and the Jets are getting him more and more involved in the game plan each week. 11 catches last week, most by a Jets receiver since 2006. So there's Harvin taking a blow. A play of 12 yards, a play of nine right there, and a first and 10 from the 38. Ivory is in. Here's Chris Ivory. You think they need a heavy diet of him, and he's into the secondary. Brought down at the 29. Hit on the play by James Harrison. He picks up eight gains of 12, 9, 13, and eight yards right there by the offense. Well, look at this. They've got three backs that are all capable. Ivory, 4.6. Johnson, 4.3. Bilal Powell, their third down back. He's averaging 4.7 a carry. So they, they're playing well up front. They're creating some opportunities. The problem, Kevin, is that they're always playing from behind. And that's gotten them away from the bread and butter, and that's running the football. Curly in the slot, second down and two. This is Ivory again. Got him in a trade with New Orleans. Not a whole lot there. Down to about the 27-yard line. Hit by a couple, including Cameron Hayward on a gain of three, but a first down nonetheless. Well, the Steelers have allowed seven scores on opening drives uh, seven opponent scores they, they, they've struggled they've gotten off to some slow starts in games defensively you just see Mike Tomlin trying to get this group going 
Well, they played their arch rival Baltimore last week. They have Tennessee next week. There was some thought maybe they'd be looking past the Jets. Well, they played three straight at home, Kevin. Let's we'll see if they can bring the show on the road. Connor is in with the first and ten, the pitch to Ivory. Oh, reading it well, but not making the tackle. It's game. And then they go outside, and Mitchell finally knocks him out of bounds with some help from Harrison. They're down to the 19. They pick up eight big chunks of yards by this Jet offense to get things underway. Well, you'll see William Gay. He's going to come screaming in from the right side of your picture. I mean, he does a nice job deciphering the play. He just misses when he's got the chance to make a tackle on the back. Make sure you get these backs when you have the opportunity. That guy is a handful. Got to bring your big boy pads when you try and tackle Chris Ivory. <laughs> Second time. <laughs> and they got the flags you right better make there. sure you get the chin strap on. And Ball start. <laughs> Offense. Number 66. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's on the former Pittsburgh Steeler who started the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Willie Colon, guilty right there, making it second down and seven. And, Kevin, they're not good enough right now to be able to make mistakes. They, they've got to play mistake-free football in order to win. They, they can't have the turnovers, the penalties, the misassignments, the mental, mental errors, and expect to win against a good team like the Steelers. Here they come out with three tight ends. Second down and seven. Chris Johnson blocked by Sutfeld, who hit from behind hard, brought down about the 19-yard line on the play by Arthur Motes. It is a gain of four. We'll say the 20. You know, it's tough to find your rhythm when you're one of these Jets running backs. You see Ivory coming in the game, then Chris Johnson comes in, then Blau Powell comes in. And, you know, they, they need, they're just like a quarterback, Kevin. Mm -hmm. They need to get their touches early. And you can't give them two or three carries, and then all of a sudden, the next time he gets a carry, it's, it's the end of the first half. That's a problem right now when you watch the Jets' substitution patterns. And the offensive line has that rhythm issue, too. Absolutely. With different backs, there's, there's different approaches to the hole. Third and three, Vic. He got a block from Abushi. On the move. He's got the first. Let's see where they spot it at the 16-yard line. Held down there by a couple, including Vince Williams. Gain of four. They get it on third and three. Another first down. Well, Dick LeBeau told us last night that Vic will take off at the drop of a hat. I mean, you're not going to completely contain him. You just can't let him run wild all day. And the minute he sees some, some color, boy, his eyes drop down so quickly, he's looking to run. Mike Mitchell was there as well from the secondary. Here's the 10th play of the game opening drive by the Jets, Rich. What an impressive drive so far for the Jets. They've, this is where they've stalled, Kevin. This is where they've had to settle for field goals early in games. We have the first and 10 Ivory. Big cut. Hole as he takes it down to the four. Some gigantic openings with some terrific blocking inside. He picks up 12, and it's first and goal Jets. Well, look at the double team right here on to it. I mean, that, that's where you talk about getting movement in the hole. You get the double team, and look at the linebacker. He flows backside. A big opening for a guy like Chris Ivory. And he's up on the second level. And if you're a safety for the Steelers, that's not what you want to see. Gay made the stop first and goal at the four. Ivory. This time he is stuck and coming from the edge was Will Allen. Brings him down. A lot of Steeler fans here, so you're going to hear a lot of yelling for the visiting team. It's a loss of a yard as Roethlisberger kept off the field so far. They're back at the five. The Jets are in their game opening drive. And Kevin, you and I talked earlier about what, what's the key to beating Pittsburgh? Keep Ben Roethlisberger warming up on the sidelines. You put together long drives. Rich, it's a seven-minute drive so far. Been terrific. That guy can hurt you right there. Make him wait it out. Little pistol. They've got Richardson in the backfield. Second goal, Vic dancing for his life. He got by Timmons, and he runs out of bounds. Ushered by Brett Kiesel on the far side near the four. It'll be third and goal. They're going to say at the five is where he hit the chalk as the drive continues for the Jets. You know, Vic amazes me. I mean, he is ridiculously quick. I mean, he nearly always avoids the initial rusher. He's got that ability to get outside of containment. Even when you think you've got the angle on him, he's so he's got that suddenness to him. It's gonna be, he's going to be a handful today for the Steelers. Powell is in. Harvin in motion. Third and goal. Vic. Curly. Incomplete. In the vicinity, they had both Allen and William Gay. It's fourth down, and the Jets will be held to a field goal try. 
Well, you can see Curley. He's going to work over, and then he goes to the back of the, the end zone. Really good job here by Will, not only Will Allen, but also William Gay coming off on that throw by Vic. There's a 23-yard field goal now coming up, but boy, they had runs of 8, 8, and 12 by Ivory. Chris Johnson caught one on the move and went 13. Harvin had carries of 9 and 12 after catches. Here's a 23-yard field goal, and it's perfect right there by Nick Folk. They had first and goal at the four. They settle for the field goal, but they take the opening drive led by Vic and go up by three on Roethlisberger. Rich Vic look calm and confident in that drive, and those numbers tell you that. And it really helps, Kevin, that they rushed for 57 yards on the opening drive. So that magic number is 175. I, I really think the Jets have to have a huge day running the football in order to have a chance to win. Volker just knocked through a 23-yard field goal. Will kick off. LeGarrette Blunt is deep back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you see the ground ball and taken on the fly at about the three by Blunt. Dancing, looking, and finally brought down by Nick Ballore. A flag has been thrown at the 37-yard line after that 15-yard return. do it again the Jets with the eight consecutive losses as you take a look at Mike Tomlin the Jets have never in a single season in the franchise's history lost nine in a row I, I know that's got to be weighing on these Jet players the, the true underdogs today I think it, it does Ken. I mean it's hard to go out there to practice every day and, and, and keep your spirits up I think they're just trying to focus on football right now I don't think you can worry about John Idzik or, or Rex Ryan you got to take care of your own business these are professionals, and it's about going out and executing the game plan. I, I do know this about a Rex Ryan coach team. They are not going to back down to anybody. And then as you were saying, Rich, to kind of open things up about this terrific three-game homestand, the Pittsburgh Steelers just finished with wins over Houston and Indianapolis and Baltimore last week. Can they take this same act on the road? Absolutely. And I think if you're the Jets, Kevin, that the challenge is going to be to find a way to disrupt Ben Roethlisberger mm -hmm. early. Get him off the spot. Get him moving. You know, he's in such a rhythm right now. That's going to be the challenge for this Jets defense early. So we'll do it again. This time Blunt will begin at about the one-yard line for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Former Patriot, Buccaneer, and brought down near the 22-yard line on the play. Looked like T.J. Graham got him. It's a 21-yard return. Here he comes, the most talked about quarterback in the league right now, Ben Roethlisberger. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. And by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. That's the west side. Well, that graphic right there tells you all you need to know about the Jets season. Kevin, they need to get off to a good start. That's going to be the key for for the Jets, they cannot afford to fall behind early. Hayward Bay is the extra receiver, and Le'Veon Bell on first down and 10. Wrapped up on the play by Calvin Pace. Out to the 25 on a gain of three with a look at Ben Roethlisberger for a second consecutive week, the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Kevin, those numbers are ridiculous. 22 touchdowns and just three interceptions. I think he's certainly in that mix for the MVP. Uh, consideration but what I love about him is he doesn't care about the numbers or stats it's always been about winning for Ben Roethlisberger he has 101 he said he was more excited about getting that than he was all those numbers here's a second down and seven Bell again from behind again this time Quinton Copels it is a gain of four he's up to the 29 the offense, the center, Marquise Ponce, as good as there is, has a very good offensive line. Roethlisberger was gushing about him last night. Receiver Antonio Brown has had double-digit receptions the last two games. 
He, he's been unstoppable, as has their quarterback. He is a handful right now, and I don't anticipate much one-on-one -on -one coverage against Antonio Brown. Third and three. Into the Jets nickel. They've got Brown. He's out of bounds, 39-yard line, shoved out of play by Phillip Adams. Gain of 10 on third and three in a Pittsburgh first down. Well, they're just going to play off coverage. I mean, they just, they're scared. They're scared to get beat deep. And, you know, you look at Adams and, and Marcus Williams on the other side, not a lot of experience, just a handful of starts. And they're going to make sure they keep these Pittsburgh receivers in front of them. You know, this, Rex Ryan wants to play defensively. A different approach. This is not how he wants to play. He wants to press. He can't do that because of the lack of depth and talent at the quarterback position. Brown just went over a thousand yards on the season. Here's a first and ten for Roethlisberger being chased on the plane. He gets it off to Johnson. The chase in by Sheldon Richardson. And there's the catch by Will Johnson losing five. Our first trip to New York in James Brown. Buffalo's opening drive. Yeah, Kyle Orton is going to find right here Chris Hogan, 25 yards out. And his AFC AFC East, Buffalo Bills take the lead 7-0 over Kansas City. Kevin Harlan, Rich Gannon, and Otis Livingston. Kyle Orton brings such stability to that Buffalo quarterback situation. Isn't it amazing that that change has made a world of difference mm. for a team that really feels they can make a push for the playoffs. Five defensive backs, second and 15 for Roethlisberger. Through the hands of Bell, and the coverage on the play by Demario Davis, the linebacker. It's third and 15 as you look at the Jets' defense today. Muhammad Wilkerson leads them in sacks off the line. Everybody talks about the Jet front seven. Like linebacker David Harris, he leads the New York defense in tackles. But the secondary, again, a concern. We've been talking about it. Undrafted Marcus Williams makes his second start as a pro. He's one of five defensive backs out there now for New York. Third and 15. Roethlisberger needs his 49. Timeout. Play clock was down to zero. Pittsburgh in their first possession, looking to make some noise. Timeout, 4-13 first. From the Meadowlands, aerial coverage of today's game is provided by MetLife. These great scenics today. Great temperature, mid-50s. A lot of Steeler fans here. Jet fans have a lot to cheer for. They're playing with the lead for the first time in a long time is New York. And the Jets fans love it. Well, it's a beautiful day for football here in the Northeast. This is, this is what you live for. After the Roethlisberger timeout, two remaining. They've got it third and 15. Again, they need the 49. A lot of movement. Look at all the pre-snap movement. Makes it difficult for a quarterback to set the protection. Miller with a block, and here they come from the side. Brought down by Jaquan Jarrett. Like a missile off the wing. His first sack this season. And a loss of 12. Then they'll go back to the 24. First time in the last seven games where the Jets do not allow an opening drive score. Well, you, you're just going to watch Jaquan Jarrett. He's going to come in and he's going to set. And then he comes at the end. But this is where the pressure is coming from. Ben Roethlisberger's left side. But if you, if you watch Jarrett, he's patient. He's kind of spying on Ben Roethlisberger. Wing the punt. Curley is back at the 30. Woo! And a big hit right off the bat. Williams coming through with a nice stop on the special team. 46-yard punt, three-yard return. Here comes Vic in 3.30 in the first. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon XLTE on America's largest, most reliable 4G LTE network. And by the new comedy, Horrible Bosses 2 in theaters November 26th. Not much to say with a view like that. Jets will get it for a second time, Rich. They have got a 23-yard field goal to take the lead. Second possession for Michael Vick in a first and 10 from the 33. 
couple tight ends and there here comes a fake to Ivory and Vic going deep and it looks like he's got Graham and he does and he's going in for the touchdown they beat Gay McCain was back there a 67 yard touchdown pass by Michael Vick Well, it starts with play action to the to the left, and then you're going to see him run the post route. The middle of the field opens up almost immediately when you see the action at them. Safety bites, and Michael Vick, he's got a cannon, and he gives Graham a chance to go make a play between the corner and the safety. Terrific execution by the New York Jets. Graham was a third-round pick by Buffalo, played there 31 games, let go, he's bounced around, signed in late September by the Jets. Here's the extra point by Nick Folk, making it 10-zip. This is going to raise some eyebrows around the NFL with 3.20 to go in the first quarter, scoring on their first two possessions. But the big one here, Vic to Graham for 67 yards. The Jets' first drive took 7.52. That one took all of 10 seconds. That was quick, wasn't it? Great yeah. play action. You, you're running the, they ran the ball so effectively in their opening, opening drive. Nine, nine runs, 54 yards. It really got the pool they were looking for from that Pittsburgh secondary. Wheaton is about a, two yards deep in the end zone. And he brings it out to about the 21-yard line. Belor, along with a couple there, 23-yard return to the sideline. Otis Livingston. Kevin, it is absolutely electric down here on the sideline. Two drives, two scores, a 10-0 lead early against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the defense is going out there with something they haven't had to do in a long time, and that's protect a lead. But you know what? In our production meetings, you can feel it, the confidence in this team. At 1-8, and eight, they still believed in each other, and that's a sign of a Rex Ryan team they will not give up, like you said in the open. Thank you, and by the way, just some housekeeping. That was a 67-yard touchdown pass, longest play allowed by the Steeler defense this season. From the 21, it's first and 10. Brown fumbled the ball, and it was recovered by Williams. Was he down? They know he was not. It is a fumble at the 20, and the Jets have gotten the ball. They have got very few takeaways. It's their first in the last five games going back to the game at San Diego October 5th. Yeah, Antonio Brown never feels Muhammad Wilkerson come in. He's, he's the one that strips at first. He gets it out, Kevin. And you talk about the lack of takeaways from this Jets defense. Just three takeaways all season, which, of course, is the worst in football. And Jaquan Jarrett was the one to vacuum it in. All turnovers are reviewed. Let's see if he has control. They'll review. Brown had it. Did he ever have possession, though? Timeout. Our referee today is Terry McCauley, who has officiated three Super Bowls and six conference championships. He has been under the hood. He has visited with the NFL office After in New York. Review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, New York. With that being said, let's go to our Mike Carey. Mike, you've watched it as well. What do you think? Yes, I would have had the same opinion if I'd been in the booth. There was two feet down, and there was not a clear evidence that he did not have control as he shifted it from one hand to the other, and then the ball came loose. So there's not enough evidence to reverse this. And, of course, we have a clear recovery at the end. He turns upfield as he's shifting the ball. Difficult one to, return, to reverse. Mike, thank you so much. Jarrett, the one to get it. Here's Vic on first and ten. And down he goes at about the 21, hit by a couple, including Jason Worlds. It is a sack, and it is a loss of about a yard. Well, there's Antonio Brown, who's been the talk of the league, along with his quarterback, but he coughs one up, and look at the position the Jets are in. Yeah, that's a tough one for Antonio Brown, Kevin. It happens so quick, and you're just trying to get possession of it, and you're trying to run away from the big guys who are coming to get you. You know, Wilkerson and Richardson and the, the big boys that weigh over 300 pounds. Second and 11. 
The block by Ferguson. Here comes Vic. So dangerous here. He got McCain to break his ankles with a good move. I can use some basketball vernacular. He's down to about the three. He picks up on that run. 18. First and goal. This is a broken play. I mean, Vic's trying to throw the football down the field. It's not there. And again, his initial instinct is to do what? Pull the ball down and run. And, and just watch McCain. He's got no chance. I mean, just a simple move like that. Look at Bryce McCain. Woof. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what Vic does for you. I mean, he just freezes you right in your tracks. First and goal at the three. Harvin at the side of Vic. The pitch. Cumberland a block. Now they got a beat on him, but he still kind of submarines his way to the two, hit by Timmons, and picks up a yard on that first and goal. Well, you, you always have to be aware of where Percy Harvin is on the field. He could be in the backfield. He could be in the slot. He could be out wide. And it's not just where he starts, Kevin, but it's where he finishes with mm -hmm. short motion and all the other things that they do for him. They're getting him more and more involved in the game plan each week. The offensive coordinator, Marty Morningway. What's he got up his sleeve here on second and goal at the two? Ivory's in. From the pistol, Ivory. Nice defensive play. Hayward. And a big hit from the secondary. And Will Allen taking the place of Polamalu. It is a loss of three, and they're back to the five. Well, I think the challenge for Dick LeBeau and this Pittsburgh defense, they've got to commit to stopping the run early. Really make, and that includes Michael Vick in the running game. You've got to make them one-dimensional and make Vick throw the ball 40 times. There's a reason the Jets are dead last in passing. It's been a real problem for them right now. But don't allow the Jets to have success running the football early. Five in the secondary, third and goal at the five. Timeout, Vick. Powell and Connor were lining up and back. You saw Harvin on the move. That's the first timeout used by the Jets. Pittsburgh used one of their timeouts earlier as well with a look at Rex Ryan. So a fumble by Antonio Brown sets up this great position for the Jets. Thursday night football now lives on NFL Network. Rookie sensation Sammy Watkins leads the Bills against the Dolphins in an AFC East clash. Thursday Night Football, 8 o'clock Eastern, live on NFL Network, where the look at the East. Buffalo's in here a couple weeks ago and beat these Jets. With a look at Troy Polamalu, off the grid today with a sprained left knee. Last time he missed a game was back in 2012, not too long ago, but it's been a while. He usually is in there. And Kevin, he creates a different dynamic for their defense. I mean, he can play at all three levels of the defense. Of course, when you look at Will Allen, he's a veteran guy, he's, he's been around, but he's not the same type of player down around the line of scrimmage. After the Jets timeout, third and goal at the five. Ferguson the block at the left tackle. Into the end zone, touchdown. Amaro! He beats Mitchell. Five-yard fit touchdown pass to his tight end. And they cash in on the Antonio Brown fumble for the Steelers. The Jets have scored all three possessions to start this game. Five-yard touchdown there to their tight end, the rookie out of Texas Tech. Second touchdown reception of the season. They got Graham, series before, and a 67-yard bomb. And they began with a 23-yard field goal on a 14-play, almost eight-minute drive. And there is Jay Samaro. They're going to confirm it as they do all the scoring plays. One foot down, control, other foot down. And sometimes you get so caught up in looking at the feet, you know, notice whether or not the receiver holds on to the football as he goes to the ground. I think in that case, he does. That, that play wasn't as clean. It wasn't just as it was drawn up. Mm -hmm. Little issue with the motion with Percy Harvin. And, of course, Jason Morrow gets caught up. You've got two, essentially two receivers in the same plane. But it's nice when you've got a 
taller tight end that can go up and get the football in the back of the end zone. Is that back, I think that foot is still the back right heel. This is a good shot of this it. This is a good shot. Yep. In, touchdown. Well, see, that, that, that's the question. See, the ball was moving a little bit. They uh, want to make sure that, the, see, that's what happens. You start looking at the feet, and sometimes you lose sight of the fact that the ball is moving a little bit. But I think in that case, Jason Morrow had enough, enough control of it. He took his other hand and kind of put it on top, oh, didn't yeah. he? He was falling down. He's, he's dropped some balls this year mm. now. He's, he's had a difficult time. Some of the easy ones he's made look difficult. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver got two feet down inbounds. Touchdown. And he held on to the ball, as Rich was talking about. Well, Amaro's only had five receptions the last two games for the Jets. So he comes up with one right there. You know, the addition of Percy Harvin has kind of sent a trickle throughout the receiving core about how many balls guys are going to get. Well, and it helps, Kevin. I mean, yeah. now all of a sudden, you know, Pittsburgh's got to treat Percy Harvin a little bit differently. It opens up some other opportunities, even for the tight ends in the middle of the field. This is Falk. 17 to nothing Jets. Wow. Pretty impressive start for New York. Here was the fumble by Antonio Brown. The recovery by Jarrett and Vic right on the money with a laser in the back of the end zone for his rookie tight end. 17-0 New York. What do you think is going through Mike Tomlin's mind right now? I would say a little, little concern, but remember, Kevin, they didn't start well last week against the Ravens. The first 20 minutes of that game was a struggle, but after that, they went on to score 43 points versus Baltimore. He doesn't seem like a, to me, like a guy that really quivers that much. No, he's got a veteran quarterback. He's got a team that's been through some fires. They will not panic. The game plan will not change at this point. Folk the kickoff. Archer, along with Wheaton, deep back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Marcus Wheaton. Getting some nice blocking from Palmer, the reserve tight end. He works his way out near the 31, 34 yard return. Here comes Big Ben. The CBS Sports app now has the fastest scores. Download it today and be the first to get your football updates and scores right on your phone. With Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan, our great CBS crew here in the Meadowlands. 30 yard line here is. Another possession, the third for Roethlisberger in his Pittsburgh offense. I think it's important to take a deep breath if you're the Steelers. I mean, you just, just need some first downs. You need to, to get back in rhythm. And give Ben some time. Just give this guy some time to work against a, a depleted Jets secondary. First and ten. Le'Veon Bell. Like Muhammad Wilkerson got him around the waist and allows a gain of three, and he's up to the 33-yard line. That takes us to the end of the first. Michael Vick, two touchdown passes. 17-0 New York on CBS. We start the second quarter with Roethlisberger and his offense at their 33 and a second down and seven. Kevin, not a lot of opportunities. You look at the first two possessions, a punt and a fumble. It's eight plays in the first, uh, first quarter. Time of possession. The Jets have had the ball for almost 11 minutes. Jets with five DBs. Gilbert the block on one side. Here comes Bell. He gets a pouncy block and he works his way to the far side. Brought down by Demario Davis. It is a gain of 10. He's to the 43 in a first down. And this is where Le'Veon Bell is so dangerous. I mean, he's so much better in the passing game in year two. He's second on the team with 47 receptions. He's averaging over nine yards a catch. Talking to Rex Ryan on Friday, that was one of his biggest concerns. Not just Bell in the running game, but his ability to run those check downs and burst out of the backfield. Yeah, I mean, as versatile a young running back as there is in the league. Yeah, he's terrific. First and ten. Archer was in. Bell again. Wrapped up in red well. Sheldon Richardson, last year's NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, pushes him back to about the 42 with a loss of one. Well, they love screens, and they just ran a screen to play before, and you come right back with another one. Ben's going to pump to his left, try and draw the rush. He's just going to have a middle screen to Bell. Good job here by the Jets coming off. You see 
Wilkerson first. Of course, Richardson gets the tackle. That's going to be a challenge, I think, for this Pittsburgh offensive line. The Jets are big and strong inside, and it starts with those two big tackles. And they always talk about the front seven, regardless of who they're playing. This is a good group. Where they're thin is on the back end, but that, the Jets' front seven will be a challenge for this Pittsburgh offensive line. Bell on second down and 11. One-arm tackle there by David Harris. And, of course, the momentum will take him out near the 48. Harris, the leading tackler, gain of six right there by Bell, who is approaching, you know, 800 yards on the ground. He's going to probably set a rookie record for the Steelers in receptions, one of the better players in that regard in the league. Yeah, you know, sometimes what gets lost in all this Ben Roethlisberger hysteria and how well he has played, Kevin, is the offensive line. I think the offensive line has really played better up front. He talked about him extensively to us last night. Yeah, you know, you look at the center. Pouncey's having a great year. DeCastro, the right guard. Some talented players. Third and five. Play clock was at game. zero. Ooh. Wow. And that's going to be Babin. And that's going to be a problem. Yep. And that is not uncharacteristic of him. There's a little bit of history with him. Wow, this was a this was a cheap mm. shot. I mean, clearly, listen, yeah. Ben Roethlisberger stops. You hear the whistle. Look at Roethlisberger saying something to him. He hit him low. So there are two fouls on the play. Delay of game, offense. After the play, personal foul in this area roughness. Defense number 58. The five-yard penalty is disregarded. The 15-yard penalty is forced against the defense. Automatic first down. Let's well, see everyone stop. And the only thing you can say in Babin's defense is maybe he didn't hear the whistle, but Kevin, everyone else did. Look at Ben. He's not even expecting it, and he hits him right, right at the knees. So it would have been third and ten. That's a huge penalty. But because of that, it's a first down to the 37-yard line of the Jets. That's when you get hurt, when you're not expecting it, when you stop and you ease up. Babin had a sack last week in Kansas City. 11-year veteran. Here's a first and 10 for Roethlisberger at the 37. White 80! White second. Here they come. He gets it out to Bell. How in the world did he get that pass away? A little shuffle pass down to the 31. A lot of congestion. Pickup of six. He pulls a Houdini and gets the pass away. Well, he is so difficult to sack. They're going to be one short here. They've got a they got a free rusher to the quarterback, and just the wherewithal to spin out of it and find a find your back to just flip it to him. He is big. He's tall. He's tall. He's sturdy in the pocket. He is. I think he's the most difficult quarterback to sack in the league. Andrew is coming in on him. Plunk in the backfield. Second down and five. A block by Johnson. A block by Miller. Jarrett will make the stop on LeGarrette Blunt with a gain of four to the 28. Kevin, the one thing about Roethlisberger is, you know, there'll be a free rusher. He will not flinch. Most quarterbacks will flinch. They'll look for a quick outlet throw. Not this guy. He'll sit in there, and he'll challenge it. And the Jets have talked all week about the challenge of getting him on the ground. Rex Ryan said sometimes it's easier to knock the ball out of his hands than to try and sack him. Third and one. Multiple tight ends. Three of them. Blunt, pouncing the block, opens the door, first down to the 25. Host of players down there for the Jets, including from the secondary Adams. It is a gain of three. This offense orchestrated by coordinator Todd Haley. Yeah, and he does a great job. I, I think getting away from the no huddle, as he told us last night, has really helped. And there's a number of reasons why. It allows them to use more personnel groupings. It allows them to use more formations. It allows them to move... Antonio Brown around. It it's puts more, I think, more emphasis, more more of a challenge on the Jets to try and match up. Eighth play of the drive. First and ten. They come at him again. Bell. And he's held down this time by Pace, who read it well, throwing him for a loss of a yard back to the Jet 26. So you're saying no huddle, no problem. Because the no huddle was such a big part of last year's late season success. Yeah, and of course they've been 
very proficient at it, but I think this has helped them, Kevin. I think it's allowed them to get some of the young players on the field. It's allowed them to continue to run the football. Sometimes when you're in that no huddle, mm -hmm. you're in one personnel grouping and one formation. It makes it a little bit easier for a guy like Rex Ryan to match up and to dial up all those blitzes. Second and 11. Bell to Castro with the block. And Foster with a block to the 18. Brought down by Jaquan Jarrett. It is a pickup of eight for Bell, who's had catches and runs of 10 and 6 yards on this drive. Eight right there on the ground. I really like Le'Veon Bell, Kevin. He, he's thinner. He looks quicker. He looks more explosive than he did a, did a year ago. And he's been so much better, as we mentioned before, in the passing game. You see him communicating with with Ben Roethlisberger back there. Third and three. Here comes the all-out. Brown grabbed by Kyle Wilson. He's got the first down. He's near the 12. He picks up five on third and three. They'll move the chains. Well, look at Ben. He, you, just, you need a completion. You go for the guy you're most comfortable with. And without question right now, it's Antonio Brown. He makes the difficult catch look easy. How about Jason Babin with that late hit on Roethlisberger that kept the drive alive when it would have been third and ten. Yeah, that was a costly penalty for the Jets. First and ten. Bell blocked by Miller. And then he gets as far as the ten-yard line. David Harris is there, lost his hat in the process, but stops him after a gain of two. Down to the ten. Martavis Bryant has four red zone touchdowns in the last two games for the Steelers against the Colts. Five yard and two yard touchdown receptions. Last week against Baltimore, 19 yard and 18 yard touchdown receptions. Four in two weeks if you're counting. And that's, he's a big target for Ben Roethlisberger, Kevin. He's six foot four, he can go get the football. Jets have talked all week about keeping an eye on him in this part of the field. He's on the move now. Second and eight. Roethlisberger looking for him. There he is. Knocked away, deflected, and picked off. Harris knocked it away. And then Jarrett, who recovered the fumble before, gets it on the ricochet. Another Pittsburgh turnover. To the 11. Jaquan Jarrett out of Temple has come up big today. Going for Bryant. Knocked away by the undrafted Marcus Williams. And then scooped in by Jaquan Jarrett. They reviewed After it. review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The defense player had two hands under the football. First down, New York. Roethlisberger's first interception in his last 147 pass attempts. Yeah, unfortunately, the Steelers' fourth Red zone turnover, that's the most in football right now. And you see Williams, he gets in there first, and Jarrett's there for the easy scoop. Trying to throw double post. They've got the tight end, Heath Miller. He's working inside, but the safety doesn't go for the tight end. He stays outside on the receiver, Bryant. Johnson in the backfield, first and ten for the Jets. There's Johnson. He was hit by Timmons near the 15, picks up four on the play. Also in there was Sean Spence starting today for Shazier. It's going to be a frustrating start for Ben Roethlisberger, Kevin. Sometimes, you know, you don't get in a rhythm, really. We talked about the Jets dominating time of possession in that first half. Not a lot of cracks, not a lot of opportunities. And then all of a sudden you start pushing. You know, you start trying to make a play mm -hmm. when it's simply not there. Well, we've seen him behind before, in fact, in the Monday night game against... The Houston Texans, they were down and scored 24 in under three minutes, second and six. Chris Johnson outside. And brought down after a gain of four. Looked like Spence is the one to get him near the 18. With NFL now, remember that heart-pounding wins or the gut-wrenching losses of your favorite team for a limited time can be seen with a free trial on NFL Films Team Yearbook on your connected TV device. Go to NFL.com slash now to learn more. I thought Chris Johnson had a couple really nice runs last week against the Chiefs. He had a season-high 69 yards and 11 carries. He also had a couple catches, two for 32. I think you could see more of him today against the Steelers. Pittsburgh in the nickel. 
Parvin. Got a block from his tight end. That was Cumberland, and he takes it out to about the 26. Over there was Blake. Also getting some help from Timmons. It is a gain of six on the play for the Jets to the 25 and a first down. You look at those first three possessions. I mean, this is just what they talked about, starting fast, you know, gaining some confidence, getting some momentum, something that they haven't had early in games. I mean, as a quarterback, you know, playing with the lead is, oh. is a lot different than playing 17 down. It really affects your decision-making, too, at times, Kevin. You don't have to be as aggressive with the football. On the direction after Powell, it goes off to Chris Johnson, who works his way to about the Cologne is down, it looks like. Out to the 29. Hit across the way by Timmons. Gain of five. Cologne slow to get up, but he's up. Chris Johnson is still trying to find his paces within this offense but actually last couple games he's he's seen some light here yeah he has and really where he's at his best is when you line him up in the eye about eight yards behind the football it's not as effective when he's offset in the gun alongside michael vick That's three games for johnson averaging over five yards a carry second down and six vick with worlds chasing over the head of harvick he was covered downfield by william gay Third and six. When Michael Vick, you know, you, you look at him and you know, you say to yourself, how does this guy still do it? How's he still able to run around as much as he as he does? And he takes really good care of himself. I think he still enjoys playing football. And I think he realizes this is a, a ter terrific opportunity to step in for Geno Smith, who was struggling, and to, to try and get this team back playing the type of football that they feel they're capable of. Geno Smith. Yeah, the turnovers were a killer for Geno Smith. Kevin. 24 starts, 37 turnovers. That's why he's sitting there watching on the sidelines. Third and six, Giacomini a block at the right tackle. They got Harvin. Blake brought him down. First down catch, falling at the 36. Gain of seven. Vic hit again. He was whacked pretty good in Kansas City last week and had to leave for a while as they brought in Matt Sims, who, by the way, is inactive today. And you just see right here at the end, it just gets pushed. Sometimes your head slams on the turf, and that's mm -hmm. what gets you. A little bit of whiplash. That's what got him last week in Kansas City. Absolutely. Just slow to get up off the ground. It does have a lingering foot issue, which has not been a problem in this one, but something they watch first and ten. Harvin with the run to the 39. And he picks up three on the play. Vic with a couple touchdown passes today. And I thought it was interesting just how they started the game. Ran the football a couple times, take the play action, take the big shot down the field. And of course, we talked about his the challenge of trying to contain Michael Vick. Even when you set the edge, even when you're disciplined with your hands and your eyes, he still finds a way to break out. And when the protection is good, he can be a very effective passer from the pocket. Salas is in. It's a receiver. Second down and seven. What is it? Good pocket. Amaro the tight end. Chased out of bounds by Allen. But there's a late flag thrown at the 47. The catch and run to the 40. Good for 21 by Amaro, who caught that touchdown pass a little bit earlier in the game. Pass interference. Offense number 85. Ten yard penalty. Second down. It's Jeff Cumberland. Well, they're going to they're gonna call Cumberland for blocking. Good shot of it from the end zone. At the liner downfield. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to I'm just going to draw it real quick. He's going to come in here. He's actually going to block, and then you see the tight end from the other side. And what happens is, is you're going to get Cumberland for blocking. It's, it's just, it's just you know it's away from the play, Kevin. But you can't go in there and and knock down a defender. Called that offensive pass interference. Second down and 17. Cumberland. Two spot, two spot. They need the 46. Harvin on the move. Johnson gets the call. Stood up and brought down. The stout Jason Worlds right there. With a gain of two up to the 31 with some post play pushing. We have Jason Worlds. Pop Warner coach. <laughs> Wasn't that great? In, in our booth today. <laughs> I know. He said, he said he went down to see him before the game. He's really proud of him. I mean, yeah. You, know, you grew at, up about, what, 20 miles from here? Yeah, it's amazing. You look at the, the play of the linebackers last week. Timmons with 11 
tackles. Harrison two sacks. Jason had an interception. Moats a forced fumble and a sack. It's been an extremely productive group for the Steelers over the last month of the season. Jets have converted third and two, third and six on this drive, but third and 15 right now. Good time for Vic. Now it crumbles. Got by Hayward, chased by Harrison. Hit so Ooh. hard he lost his helmet at the 38. He's shy of the first, obviously. He gets seven on third and 15. And we've reached the two minute warning. Vic right here on the move. Hit on the play. Two minute warning. The Steelers are challenging that there was a fumble at the end of the play, and they can do that with the challenge because it was outside the two-minute mark. Inside two minutes, it's all in a review. Well, James Harrison, he gets it started. He, he trips him up. You'll see Timmons come in. He knocks the helmet off of Vic, and then Hayward has the wherewithal to come running in and dive on what he thinks is a loose, loose ball, and I agree with him. And the official didn't even see it at his feet. Look at Vic. The question is whether the ball comes out before his knee hits the ground, and I believe it does. Now the question is, then it hits the back leg of Lawrence Timmons, but it stays on the field. Stayed in bounds. Right. And I don't and think it ever touches the white. And then you're going to see Cameron Hayward. He comes in there, and he scoops it up. Inside two minutes, of course, it is generated by the booth. Outside two minutes, as this one was, a challenge by the Steelers. As you take a look at Cameron Hayward. Good hustle play. He was smart. Yeah, he was on it. Mike Carey has been watching this from our New York studios. Mike? Boy, here we have one of the most complicated plays in a while. <laughs> if I was in the That's booth. brought you in. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's see, let's see what well, Jim has to The ruling on the field stands. Pittsburgh is charged with their second timeout. All right, Mike, fill it in for us. Well, if I was in the booth, I would have reversed this one. And here's why. You'll see that. Michael Vick is not down, his shin is on his foot, and before the ball, before his knee hits, the ball rolls off the back of his hand. And then the ball clearly stays in bounds without being touched by anyone. And then 97 has a clear recovery in the field of play. This one I would have reversed. You would have called it a fumble. I would have called it a fumble and right. a clear recovery by Pittsburgh. I agree. Right. I agree too, yeah, we saw it. I think the uh, Jets dodged the bullet there. So here is the punt. Ryan Quigley will send this downfield. Antonio Brown on the fly. He fumbles the ball again. Muffed it. Jets have it. That's the initial signal. It would be the third turnover. Brown running up. The ball was dying, and he muffs the punt. Well, he's trying to make a play. I mean, it's just, you can't get bored with the, the details. Uh, he just, you know, you're, you're behind in a game, and it's a short punt, very difficult one to field, but Antonio Brown trying to make something special happen, and in doing so, he makes a huge mistake. Graham's able to rip it away at the bottom of the pile from Antonio Brown. As it stands right now, the ball at the 28-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brown, who they ruled coughed one up after he caught one earlier in this half, has muffed the punt. So at the 28-yard line in Pittsburgh territory, it is first and 10 for the Jets. Chris Johnson, slowed initially by him. And brought down on the play with a McCain hit and Brett Kiesel on a gain of a yard to the 27. I just think this is a really short punt. I mean, Antonio Brown is humping it just to try and get in the position to make a play. When you think about the Jets, just three turnovers coming into today's game, Kevin. They've, they've been struggling to get their hands on loose balls, and now they've got three takeaways in the first half against the Steelers. Makes a difference, doesn't it? Big reason why they're up 17-0. Second down, nine. Vic Amaro drops the ball. Coverage by Bryce McCain. Incomplete. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report from our CBS studios, JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cowan. Scores, news, and highlights 
as well as a preview of Thursday Night Football on NFL Network. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Decker has yet to catch a pass for the Jets. Third and nine for New York. Powell was in the backfield. But he's hit! Pressure to Vicks left. Here it comes. He got by Mitchell. He tries to dodge Motes and finally brought down Hayward. Again comes up with a nice play, bringing him down at about the 27, third sack of the day by the Pittsburgh Steelers on Mike Vick. Yeah, you're just going to see it. They create a little bit of a gap. And the pressure, they like to bring pressure to Vick's left to force him back to his right. They do a good job. You see the defensive line again. Hayward able to come off and get the sack. It'll be fourth down, 55 seconds to play before halftime. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, J.B., Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cowan for the latest NFL scores and highlights, as well as a preview of Thursday Night Football on NFL Network. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Look at Antonio Brown, who has been the talk of the league with what he's done. He's uh, coughed it up twice today, a muffed punt, a fumble. Now a 45-yard field goal by Folk, and he does not get it. Missing from 45. He's been so clutch, but missing right there. And Pittsburgh holds. Steelers will get it back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Available now, rated mature. Macy's. And by Coors Light with this week's most refreshing fan, Douglas S. 2014 marks the NFL's fourth annual Salute to Service Military Appreciation Campaign. And as part of the day, senior uniformed military officials participated before the game in the Jets player walk. A lot of military here, men and women of our armed forces. And a very much show of appreciation by everyone. Jets squander great field position. Bell will be in the backfield with Roethlisberger. Now Le'Veon goes in motion. The second new player from Michigan State. I think I misspoke and called him a rookie before, obviously. The second year, he gets it right here. Tried to cut inside and banged into DeCastro. And play was broken up. A couple guys. We had Davis there and some others, including Antoine Barnes. Nice stoppage of the play. No gain. Second and ten. No timeouts for Pittsburgh. They lost one in the challenge. You may recall, here is Roethlisberger. Inside Antonio Brown. Here is where he is deadly. Nice tackle made by Jarrett, who has been all over the field. Gain of 15. Good play. First down. Midfield. They'll clock it. It'll be second and 10. Well, they scored seven times in the final two minutes of the first half of the first nine games. This is where they've been so good. Of course, Ben Roethlisberger. This is where he's at his best. But Kevin, look at the numbers for Roethlisberger in the first half. Just 39 passing yards. No touchdowns and an interception. But, but the reality is, Rich, the way they've scored the last three weeks and so suddenly, I mean, they're never out of it. No, they're not out of it. But, I mean, you know, you've got to be, got to be a little shocked right now, I think, if you're Todd Haley, Ben Roethlisberger, and the Pittsburgh offense. Second down and 10. Here comes Babin from behind. He gets it away. Lance Moore, the former New Orleans it. Saints. Yep, they're down to the 34-yard line. He picks up 15 on the play. No timeouts. You see the clock. They clock it in time. They'll get a field goal try. 15-yard pass to Brown. 15-yard pass to Lance Moore. That was textbook. That was. And that's great execution by Ben Roethlisberger. No panic, understanding the situation. No timeouts. Able to drive his team down there to try a field goal. So this would be huge, Kevin. They got to stop just a moment ago. Now they got a chance to put three on the board before the half. And get some momentum going. Get some momentum, time. absolutely. Sweeves him. If he makes this 53-yarder, this would be a career long. His miss earlier this year from 50. Got to hustle. The distance and got it. 53-yarder. Sean Sweezum 
engineering him into position, Ben Roethlisberger. 15-yard pass to Brown, 16-yard pass to Moore, and the shutout gone for Ryan, which they take great pride in, and a 53-yard career-long field goal by Sean Sweezum on a day where there's negligible wind inside MetLife Stadium. Well, he got that all can, of it. That can begin, which we were talking about before, some momentum heading to the, heading to the locker room. Mike Tomlin is the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers with our Otis Livingston. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. Coach, you said that this is not a 1-8 team, the New York Jets, but I don't think anyone would have thought 17-3 at the half. What are they doing, especially against your offense? We're minus three in the turnovers. You know, you're not going to be minus three and be any better than 14 points down. That's just the reality of it. You know, I talked about the reasons why they were 1-8s because they were minus 15 in the turnover ratio. Well, today they're plus three. We got to stop kicking our own butts. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. All right. Back to you, Kevin. He always puts it a pretty good way. The Pittsburgh first half offensive resume, 77 yards and three turnovers. If they will regroup. It'll be a great second half. We'll be back with the Verizon halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Three first half turnovers by the Steelers. You look at Ben Roethlisberger. How do they get back in this? Well, they get the ball to open up the second half, Kevin. That's going to be important. And of course, you know, Ben Roethlisberger's got to be able to start throwing the ball down the field a little bit. Eleven of his comp 11 completions, but six have gone to the running backs. They need some explosive plays defensively. They better start stopping the run. They've already given up 104 rushing yards in the first half. And of course, time of possession uh, is is become an issue for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They need to give Ben Roethlisberger more opportunities in the second half. Steelers have won three consecutive games in four of five. The New York Jets have lost eight consecutive games. The franchise has never lost nine straight in the same year. And our second half is underway. Wheaton will bring it out for Pittsburgh. Sudfeld got a hand on him. Banged down the play by Powell. It is a 25-yard return. And through the first 30 minutes, these are some of the numbers. Well, look, you, you, you turn the ball over three times, you're, you know, you, you're never going to be, usually never going to be leading the game. And, of course, you look at the Jets, Kevin. They came out. They put together a really nice, impressive first drive. They came away with the field goal. But a couple turnovers, which is something that their offense hasn't had. Three, just three takeaways by the Jets coming into today's game. They had three uh, in the first half. Ben's got to do a better job making sure that uh, this group takes care of the football. Antonio Brown sick to his stomach, put the ball on the ground twice in the first half. They go outside with the tackle made by Marcus Williams. Martavis Bryant, the rookie from Clemson, with a gain of nine to the 29 into the sideline, and Otis Livingston. Kevin, I just spoke to a very upbeat Rex Ryan coming out of the locker room. He said that in here in the second half, they're going to have to stay focused offensively, be balanced with the pass and the run. Defensively, they're going to have to get Big Ben on the ground. He said they had a lot of free runners but haven't been able to. I asked him, was it as simple as getting those turnovers? He said, that's a big part of it. But before this game, we knew we could hang with this team. Otis, thank you. Second and one for Hayward Bay. It's incomplete. Jarrett was there. Third and one. You got to make that catch. It's one of the reasons why Darius Hayward Bay has bounced around the league, Kevin. He's not really been sure handed. That's cut into his reps as well. Steelers, by virtue of what they've done over the last couple of games, have reshaped the AFC North. If they win today, they'll have sole possession of first place, but trailing, as you see, early second, third, and one. Blunt into a pile of defenders. Well, this is close. It is very close. I think the one official down on this side gave him, gave him a pretty decent spot. Looks like he's submarine into Castro. May have been digging down low to get him some room, and they'll move the chains for a first down. Now they jump the ball. Sometimes you're when you're struggling, you change the pace and tempo a little bit. Going no huddle has helped the Pittsburgh Steelers in the past. Four defensive backs. It is first and ten for Roethlisberger. Another catch made by Moore, and a good one it was. Jarrett knocked him astride into the 43, 
13-yard pickup. And Moore, who had a 16-yard catch before halftime, comes up with a first down reception there with a look at the first half resume. Yeah, you know, not, not a lot to talk about, Kevin. And you can see why they, they struggle a little bit. Just four possessions. They, they put together a good drive, and it ends in an interception down in the red zone. Four so far this season for Pittsburgh in that part of the field, most in football. Bell back in, outside, Marcus Wheaton. And brought down on the play by Marcus Williams. It is a gain of six to the 43. Talk about form tackling and how important it is. We lose sight of it at, at times. And look at Marcus Williams here. Boom. It's his head in the right spot. Does a good job wrapping. Starting for Darren Walls, who's injured. Walls out with a calf injury. Second down and four. Bell in motion. Good block by Beecham. Outside for Bell. Another reception brought down by Davis. He picks up six. By the way, we were going to mention this in the first half, but with his receptions today, Le'Veon Bell has now set a team record for receiving by a running back. And John, and John L. Williams had it before. He's only nine games into it. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's really where he's he's improved. I think Roethlisberger has got a real comfort level with Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield. Just in ten. The progression read. Flag is down, and Roethlisberger is down. Mohamed Wilkerson douses him near the 45. No gain. That would be a sack. Well, they held Holding. it back. They did. Defense number 94. Five-yard penalty added the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's Damon Harrison on the defensive line for the New York Jets. Well, go ahead and run it. Just watch Harrison. He's right here in the middle of the screen. What he's going to do, he's going to eye the back. Right there, he grabs him. You see that? He knows that when Ben Roethlisberger is in trouble, he's going to look to check it down to Le'Veon Bell. There's a reason why Le'Veon Bell has 47 catches coming into today's game. Six receptions today by Bell. New running back record for this wanted franchise in Pittsburgh. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Great blocking. Look at the time he has. And unbelievable. Uh -oh. Try, oh, and another interception. And again, it's by Jaquan Jarrett. This is unbelievable. He's recovered. Jarrett has number 37, a fumble, and he's got two picks. One on a ricochet, and this one, the jump ball. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by USAA. USAA proudly salutes all those who have served. And by McDonald's, official sponsor of the NFL. I'm loving it. Beautiful view on a great autumn afternoon in the New York, New Jersey area. Jaquan Jarrett. First two interceptions of his three-year career from Temple. In a secondary that has been much maligned, and rightly so. It's first and ten for Michael Vick. Chris Ivory, nice tackle. That was Harrison. No gain on the play. Well, you go back and look. It's just a three-man rush. And Ben Roethlisberger, that's why he has plenty of time. When we talk about the cardinal sin, you can't be late down the middle. And you go ahead and freeze it right there. You look, you've got three defenders, and you're trying to fit one in to a young player in Marcus Wheaton. And we got a chance to read the lips of Ben Roethlisberger on the sideline. He's kicking himself for a poor decision. First catch by Deckerot. Second down and 10. Whirls around. McCain near the 30. Is one of the guys to bring him down across the way. Also Whirls. Gain of nine on the play to the 30-yard line. Eric Decker, he's quietly... Having a good year, Kevin. He leads the, the team with 40 catches coming into today's game. He's a little frustrated. I mean, he's coming off a back-to-back 80-plus-catch back 80 catch re, re, reception seasons, 1,000 yards in Denver, but doesn't have Peyton Manning throwing him the football anymore. He had 16 receptions over the last couple games for the New York Jets as they sent Salas in motion. False start. Offense number 66. Five-yard penalty, third down. Willie Colon, former Pittsburgh, just started that Super Bowl, as we mentioned back in the first half. So Decker comes in, as you say, the leading receiver, leaves what was a very, as those numbers you just rattled off, indicate a pretty pass-happy offense in 
Denver with Manning and chose to come to New York. His role has changed. And, you know, it's tough when you go from a young, inexperienced quarterback and Geno Smith to a, another guy. And some growing pains for this offense in the passing game. Decker again. Blake is right there on that third and six. Beldingham throws him across the way. Back to the 26. It is a gain of a yard. The defense of Pittsburgh holds. And so that interception thrown by Roethlisberger doesn't come back to bite him, and now they're going to get the ball back. Well, they're playing better defensively the last month because, as Dick LeBeau told us last night, more fundamentally sound with the scheme. They've limited the explosive plays, and they've been able to generate more pressure with their front. But the Jets have only gotten seven points off those four turnovers. The punt here by Quigley. Brown, fair caught near the 25. 49-yard punt. An off day for Roethlisberger, but explosive nonetheless. We're in the third in New York, New Jersey. Well, those numbers are surprising as you take a look at Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, very uncharacteristic, Kevin, for a quarterback that came into this game red hot. But I never sense with him or their coach no that there's panic. ever panic. Yeah. No. Again, like we said, going to break, only seven points by the Jets off four turnovers. Plenty of time to get it done. It's time for him to start going to work, though. Hell in the backfield, first and ten. In the pistol. Going deep. And looking for Bryant. An incomplete coverage by Adams. No yellow on the field. Adams starting today. Roethlisberger's well, afternoon. Yeah, it's been a frustrating one, you know. Jaquan Jarrett, Kevin, he's having a field day. He had a sack, an interception, two interceptions, actually. He recovered a fumble. He keeps this up. He'll be the AFC Defensive Player of the Week. You know, he's from Brooklyn. Jaquan Jarrett went to Fort Hamilton High School, played with Muhammad Wilkerson at Temple. Only two players in that program he selected in the first two rounds. He's having a career day against the Steelers. Second and ten. And it's behind week. With the coverage again by Phillip Adams. Well, you can see the frustration from Ben Roethlisberger. They're just not on the same page. You know, he just looked at the play before. He underthrew a receiver that had a chance, which we, we typically never see from a guy like Roethlisberger. And then there, he misses a little comeback on the boundary. They've not even targeted their tight end, Heath Miller, today. Well, he's been quiet. He's been blocking a lot. He has. Concerned about some of the edge rushers. You've got some guys that can come off the edge, particularly Calvin Pace on their right. It was a second and ten. You saw the incompletion. Third and ten. Well, here comes an all-out. Roethlisberger once again going for Bryant. Back there covered by Kyle Wilson. Incomplete. Three and out. Steelers have got a punt again. Well, this is what, what Rex Ryan likes to do. I mean, this is just an all-out pressure. You're just going to see them all coming, and the middle of the field is wide open. But Ben just doesn't have enough time to hold it. And he's got to throw it before the receiver is out of his break. Bryant not able to make the adjustment on the fly. Brad Wing to punt for the Pittsburgh Steelers out of LSU. Curley is back to retrieve at the 28th. And he was hit by a couple of Pittsburgh Steelers, including Hayward Bay and Golden. 46-yard punt. Here comes Michael Vick. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And by the all-new 2015 Acura TLX, it's that kind of thrill. Great Phoenix today. Aerial coverage of today's game provided by MetLife. Hovering above, just saw a shot of Midtown Manhattan. Eight miles is roughly where we are from the city. First and ten after the Pittsburgh punt. Vic, they were pressuring. Decker hit by McCain. Move him to the 45-yard line of the Steelers. 14-yard pickup. It is a jet first down. Really nice right route here by Eric Decker. He's going to double move. He stops. He's going to take off again, and then he puts his foot in the ground to create separation between himself and Bryce McCain. Good patience 
the top of that route. Oh, Vic has come wide. Wildcat, Powell, Johnson in motion, Galal Paul. And he brings it down to about the 41, falling on him, Mike Mitchell. Powell is out of Louisville, gain of four. Well, let's take a look at the Jets' checklist. And we talked about getting to Ben Roethlisberger. They've done that, Kevin. They kept him on the move. They've gotten him off the spot. They've made him, helped him, forced him to throw a couple interceptions, take the ball away, four takeaways for, for a team that was struggling in that department just three coming into today's game we talked about the, the key number i thought the jets would have to run for 175 yards they're on pace with 104 rushing yards already and some of that of course coming from michael vick second down and a long six vick Here he goes Chase again. by timmons on the move has the first down with a block downfield from his tight end tomorrow to the 23 yard line of the pittsburgh steelers a run of 18 for michael vick well, he gets outside, and look at the block from Chris Ivory. That allows Vic to break contain. That's the one thing the Steelers talked about, especially runs to his left. He doesn't want to go to his right. That's why most of the pressure the Steelers have brought has come to Vic's left. Double tight ends, Harvin in the backfield. Look at that, over 6,000 rushing yards. That'll get your attention. First and ten, Harvin. Sucks into about the 20-yard line. Timmons and some others on that pile. It is a gain of three. When Harvin came here, you say, you know, in Seattle, I felt I was almost suffocating with just particular roles. I want to do everything, in, in particular, be a full-time receiver. Yeah, that's really what his goal is, Kevin. I think in order to do that, he's going to have to really work on route running. You know, at times he's, he could be sloppy. At times he's not disciplined getting the depth that he needs. And talking to Vic on Friday, he said, one of the things we've asked him to do is watch Eric Decker. He's really good at his craft, and he's a very good disciplined route runner. That's where Percy Harvin has to improve. Into the Nichols, second down and seven. Decker can't get it. Blake was there. Coverage and a catchable ball, although high, incomplete, third and seven for the Jets. The reason it was high is because 35-year-old Brett Kiesel came off the ball and got his hands up made it difficult for Vic is that a change that you've seen since Watt has come on and batted down so many balls seems like you're seeing more batted down balls by these guys by virtue of what Watt is doing in Houston and I put some of that on the quarterback Kevin here's why when I threw those quick screens and those bubble screens I reminded the tackles be aggressive fire out and get their hands down don't allow these guys to jump up and bat balls third and seven Vic Harvin Brought down by Gay. He's got the first down, a gain of eight on third and seven to the 12. And that's the kind of throw that a receiver appreciates. Low and away. Protect the receiver from what could be a nasty hit. That's Harvin's second third down reception on the afternoon. Here's an example of a quarterback looking out in front of the throw. Didn't want to lead him into Mike Mitchell, the safety on the opposite side. He may have lit up Percy Harvin. Roethlisberger remaining on that bench. Another long drive by the Jets. Vic wants to talk things over with his coordinator, Marty Morningweg. Five and a half in the third, moving in again and leading the Jets are 17-3. We just had a Vic timeout for the New York Jets. They used their first two remaining. And you see when Pittsburgh had that one possession in the red zone, that was the first stop in the red zone by the Jets' defense all season. Oh, yeah, you got a joker. You got so a now joker. here is a pretty important first in 10 from the 12. Tomorrow. Redwell brought down basically at the line of scrimmage. And with the first hit on him was Hayward. There's no gain on the play. Very conservative call on first down, tight end screen. But, Kevin, I think if you're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm Michael Vick, you can't take your foot off the gas. I mean, you know, you look at the, a lead like this, 17-3, it's nothing when you think about what Ben Roethlisberger can do in, in a period of 15 minutes. Or, or in three, as we saw against Houston on a Monday night. Here's a second down, long nine. Vic is going to overshoot tomorrow in the end zone and the coverage on the play by Will Allen. Incomplete. 
Morrow Morrow caught a touchdown pass earlier in the game of five yards. T.J. Graham caught one of 67 yards. Third and nine coming up. And the look at the two quarterbacks today. Yeah, really unusual for, for Ben to struggle like this. And Vic has done a good job, Kevin, even going back to last week. No turnovers. That's the key for Vic in this Jets offense. Five defensive backs for the Steelers. Third and nine. Powell is in. Giacomini has a block. Here comes Harrison chasing Vic. Ooh. Almost picked off. Almost on the ricochet. Harvin. It's incomplete. Almost picked off by Gay Williams. Almost in the third. There's a lot going on. A lot of moving parts on that particular particular play. Really a poor mm. decision by Michael Vick. Moving to his left. Throwing back across his body. William Gay's there for the easy, easy interception. Just squeeze it. And you mm. got it. And unfortunately, that will result in some uh, three points for the Jets. That would have been a big turnover for Pittsburgh. Well, here's a 30-yard field goal try now by Nick Folk. He missed one earlier from 45. He nailed one from 23. This would make it a three-score game. Yeah, that, that, would have kept game. It, that would have kept it a two-score yep. game. And this, of course, Kevin, as you point out, will make it a three-score game. Every play is critical at this point for Pittsburgh. 30-yarder. 20 to 3 the Jets. Jets have lost eight straight. Pittsburgh has won three in a row. Playing with emotion today. And leading a very good Pittsburgh team. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by KFC. The world's best chicken. How do you, KFC? And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's the East River and the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge. A beautiful day here in New York, New Jersey. It's where they had the Super Bowl last year with that incredible weather day they had for that game between Seattle and Denver. There's Ben Roethlisberger and his team down now by 17 points as they were earlier until they got the field goal, 53 yards. I squeeze them just before halftime. So we just saw a 30-yard field goal by Folk, and here's the ensuing kickoff. Marcus Wheaton will take this about five yards deep and leave it in the end zone. Roethlisberger at 6-3 with his team, coming off a 43-23 win over Baltimore, down by 17. By throwing those 12 touchdown passes, consecutive weekends, no one had done that in consecutive games. Third all-time to throw Six in two different games in the single season. He's missed his last four coming to the line with a couple of picks today by Jarrett. It's first and ten from the 20. Oops, somebody moved. Is that Gilbert? Looked like it was. False start. Offense. Number 77. Five yard penalty. First down. Thursday on CBS, our own Phil Sims will guest star on a new elementary. It's Thursday at 10, 9 Central. Only. CBS, that is the first penalty, by the way, on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh was the most heavily penalized team in the league heading into today. It's first and 15, but that is just their first. Bell in back of Roethlisberger. Bell with a block. Ben going deep, looking for Bryant. He got it! What a catch! Right in front of Adams. He's down near the 40, maybe the 39-yard line of the New York Jets. A 45-yard connection to Martavis Bryant. Well, he does a really nice job here, Martavis Bryant, adjusting to what was an underthrow by Ben Roethlisberger. And a little bit of a push right there at the end on the corner, Phillip Adams. But this is what you get with a guy that's six foot four that can go up and get the football. Adams beaten, first and ten, Pittsburgh at the 40 of New York. Roethlisberger down from behind, sacked on the play by Doosable. Leger Doosable, his second sack of the season. The first was against Peyton Manning here a couple weeks ago. They see Doosable, he's just working inside it with Babin. Babin goes outside, and Doosable comes back underneath, and they don't do a good enough job passing it off. 
Ben Roethlisberger never feels him on his back. It was a loss of seven. They're back to the Jet 47. Facing now, second down and 17. Archer was in the backfield. There's the first catch today by Heath Miller. Brought down by Davis. Tumbles close to a first down. The 31, 16-yard pickup on second and 17. And when you're struggling a little bit, sometimes working back inside to your tight end can really be a blessing for a quarterback like Roethlisberger. Heath Miller, not the fastest guy, but he's got a great feel and a great sense for the type of coverage. Third and one, Bell picking and poking his way for a first down to the 26-yard line of the New York Jets. Couple falling on him, including Barnes, gain of five. Let's take you to our CBS studios and James Brown. Bill Cowher excited about this. Watch as Earl Mitchell breaks through, blocks it, picked up by Deion Jordan. He will return this all the way down to the three-yard line, which sets up a Tannehill to Mike Wallace, three-yard touchdown pass, and the Miami Dolphins take the lead 13-10 up in Detroit. Ah, uh, Kevin, Coach Cowher gets excited by plays like that. That's the fourth kick the Dolphins have blocked this year. It's incredible that you knew that. <laughs> It's first and ten. Miller again. Now they're using him. He talked about this earlier. He dives after a tackle by Landry to the 17-yard line on a pickup of eight before he had a 16-yard pickup. You know, it's incredible. Every time Heath Miller catches the ball, everyone, this whole crowd yells Heath. You see all the terrible towels here. A lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans in the house today. They travel well, as well as any team in the, in the National Football League. Second down, short two. Bell hangs his way in there. He's a rugged runner. 13-yard line is where he was brought down. And he was brought down on the play by Davis, and he picks up four. This might be one of those conversations if you're... Mike Tom, when you turn to your offensive coordinator and say this is four down territory, then they've got to be able to come away with a touchdown on this drive. Seventh play of it, first and ten. There's Todd Haley right to his right with the play sheet. It really changes, and you know that information early on first down as opposed to second or third down. To be able to have that information, you know you've got four shots in this part of the field. Ooh, knocked away Bell. That is an incompletion. Davis drilled him from behind. Demario Davis, second leading tackler, second down and 10 for Pittsburgh. The Jets have two very good inside linebackers in Davis and Harris. It's a good look at Dennis Thurman and Rex Ryan right there, and they talk about that defense. Rex usually pulls the trigger. Dennis Thurman's the one that's calls the, the information into Harris, their middle linebacker. And of course, he relays that information to the defensive line and the secondary. Jets defense came into today allowing the second most points in the NFL, but only three so far. To Roethlisberger in the offense of Pittsburgh gets Bell on a second and ten, dives ahead and gets near the four. Adams there, Davis may have tripped him up. Gain of nine on the play. The lady on Bell runs routes like a wide receiver. And they put him out wide. He looks very comfortable out there. Third and one, Bell. Ooh, he's short. And the ball looked like it was floating around in there, too. Landry got him. Also a tackle there by Kenrick Ellis. Third quarter has come to a close. With Pittsburgh down 20-3. to three. Helmet is off, Roethlisberger with a fourth down. We'll watch a field goal attempt to begin the fourth quarter. It's 20 to three, somewhere along the line. They've we got to kick this field goal anyway. Well, so. yeah, they, yeah, but you know, Kevin, they were, you know, I think they lost a half a yard. Right, they had I a difficult it. time getting back to line of scrimmage on third down. As a quarterback, nothing pains you more than having to come off the field and settle for a field goal in this part of the field. Especially him, huh? You just feel like you wasted an opportunity there. Sweezum who kicked a career-long 53-yarder before halftime. We'll try a 23-yarder right here. With wing, the punter holding. Long snap, Greg Warren. Oh, my gosh. 
It has been that kind of day for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Missing a 23-yard field goal. Boy, you can't make it up, can you? Good snap, good hold, and he just he just shanks it. That is the shortest missed field goal in the NFL this season. 23-yarder. He had been 30 of 31 from in that area. And the lead is still 17 for Ryan and his Jets. And Sweezum cannot believe it. Especially on a day when he kicked a career-long 53-yarder. So Pittsburgh today, Rich, two red zone possessions, one field goal miss, and one turnover. Johnson in the backfield. Vic with the handoff. Tackle made by Spence on first and ten. And again to about the 24. They pick up five. And Hollywood being first counts. Friday on CBS, don't miss the first ever broadcast of the Hollywood Film Awards live. All your favorites will be there. Queen Latifah will host Friday at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS. How about the, the Jets defense? 32 at 32. Teams getting in the red zone. It's scored on the New York defense. Today, two possessions by Roethlisberger in this explosive offense and two red zone appearances with nothing. Yeah, that's terrible. They, they, the turnover down there was, was a killer as well, Kevin, earlier in the first half. What is it? Second down and six. Time and the toss. Incomplete. It's tomorrow in the coverage by William Gaines. Third and six coming up. Well, look at that. You know, the interceptions, the fumbles, you, you miss a, a chip shot from 23 yards, and you wonder why you're trailing 20 to 3. And now if you're the Jets, Kevin, I mean, you just, there's a three-score game here, three-possession game, and you just got to you know, continue to make good decisions. Continue to run the football and limit Ben Roethlisberger's opportunities. Third and six for Vic. Oh, Ooh. from behind! He was drilled a big-time sack by Worlds, who's from the area. Fourth sack today authored by the Pittsburgh D. And the punt unit comes out for the Jets. Big-time play. Worlds. Well, somebody blows an assignment here. He's right here, and watch the back. Now, I'm not so sure Chris Johnson, he's got a free release. He's supposed to block the tackle. He doesn't step out, and you just turn Worlds loose on Vic. The Jets are fortunate that ball didn't come out. Quigley to punt. Brown is deep back. From the 37-yard line. Right out of bounds he goes. Pryor rushes him away. Worlds comes in. Grew up uh, 20 miles away from this stadium. Big time hit. Timeout. Three and out by the Jets. Good beginning field position for Roethlisberger. Best starting field position that they've had today, Kevin. And, and they need to do something with it. This game is getting at a critical point for Pittsburgh. Yeah, the first and ten pass across the way, and it's caught by Marcus Wheaton. Shoot out of bounds by a couple. Over there is Adams. Gain of 11 on the play, and they'll mark him at the 44. You mentioned how quickly this team can score and get back into a game. Last four possessions, they've struggled. This is the best field position that they've had to start a drive. And Jets have done a really nice job in their secondary. Can we came into this game talking about the issues that they had at the cornerback position. They've done a nice job keeping things in front of them. Bell with the block from Miller and Gilbert and sneaking through with the tackle is Sheldon Richardson limiting Bell to a gain of one to the 43 to the sideline and Otis Livingston. Yeah, Kevin, uh, Pittsburgh Steeler head coach Mike Thomas not surprised by this defensive effort. He was really impressed with the Jets defense, starting with that guy, Sheldon Richardson, Mo Wilkerson up front. He said the rest of their guys are huge. The only question is that secondary, and as you've seen so far, they have held up, led by Jaquan Jarrett's two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Jaquan Jarrett has been terrific. Second down, nine. Outside they go, Bryant. Good block by Wheaton. He's got, there's a flag. He's got room to go to the 35. Held on the play by Pace and some others. It's a gain of eight. Illegal block in the back. Offense. What's 
Wheaton, number 11. Number 53. Oh, I take that back. Penalty. It was by Pouncey. Pouncey picked it up. On the line. Doesn't happen very often. Week 10 continues later today on Fox. Then tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC. And tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN and Westwood One Radio. With Boomer Esiason. Spot foul. It is third and 11 from the 45. Second down and 11. I'll take that back. Roethlisberger, Brown, pushed out of bounds across the way by Marcus Williams. It is a gain of 13 yards. That is a first down. Watch Brown drop his hips at the end of this route and watch the separation he creates between himself and the corner. Marcus Williams very cognizant of the straight line speed and so he's going to give you that route underneath. But a really nice route there by Antonio Brown. Moore in the slot, first and ten. Blocked by Beecham. Outside they go for Martavis Bryant. Coverage across the way by Philip Adams. Signed after the final cutdown. And original pick by San Francisco in the seventh round. He's playing for his fifth team. Well, when you're struggling, every play matters. And there's been a couple drops so far. Bryant, it's a, it's a catchable ball. It's a good throw here by Ben Roethlisberger. Extend those hands, use those hands, not let the ball get in on your body. Second and ten. Right over the outstretched hand of a defender. The catch by Brown, first and ten to the 20, picks up. 12. That defender was Antoine Barnes, so there had to be a nice little touch on it, Rich, by Roethlisberger. This should never happen because it's too deep. The corner knows that he has help over the top, and yet look how soft he's playing. And not only that, but they buzz a linebacker out underneath. I mean, most of the coverage today, the rotation has been to Antonio Brown. That's not good technique there by Marcus Williams. You have to be firmer when you have help over the top. Roethlisberger on first and ten, pocket crumbles, shuffle pass Miller, blocked by Bell, pounds his way to the 16-yard line, hit by Davis, picks up four for Pittsburgh. That's amazing when you watch Ben Roethlisberger, he always has his eyes downfield. If you're hanging on his back, if you got him around the waist, if you're pulling on him, Always keeps his eyes focused downfield. That's a good point. Second down and six. Avion Bell. Hit by Davis. Works his way for a couple to the 14-yard line. He's never bothered by all the traffic around him, isn't he? No, of and, and I thought it was interesting. Rex Ryan knows how to sack a quarterback. And when he talked about sacking Ben Roethlisberger, he says you have to wrap him up, but then you have to drop down and lower your weight to get him on the ground because he's so strong. You don't think about that. Even the big linemen, they're talking about when they get to him, you got to drop your weight to pull him down. Third and four. He's got him. Brown. Great move, and he takes it to the one. Finally brought out of bounds by Landry. He just faked out Phillip Adams. It's a 13-yard gain, and the Steelers have it first and goal to go. Well, we talk about his great short area quickness, Oof. and that's what he has. <laughs> he has a suddenness to him. Landry came in there and wrapped him up and pushed him out of bounds, saved the touchdown. Brown has had catches on this drive of 13, 12, and 13 yards. Harrison has come in the backfield with LeGarrette Blunt, first and goal. Palmer a tight end in motion. The fake, the block by Blunt. Throw it away. Looking for Harrison. And for Miller. And a flag. In the line of flight, both Harrison and Miller. On the first and goal in completion. Two fouls. 2000 play, holding defense, that penalty's declined. 
Personal foul, oh, the passer, defense number 98, late knockdown. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. 98 is Quentin Copels. Kevin, I don't know if I ever in my 17-year career had a first and goal at the one and got a chance to throw it. <laughs> you know, you just, you know, most teams, they'll just run it three times down there, but... This is a tough this is a tough defense to run the ball against inside. They are so big and so strong in between the tackles. Three tight ends. Harrison offering a block, but block goes the other way. Harrison was going over the right guard, the linebacker, serving as a fullback. Yeah, Blunt went over the left guard. And virtually no gain. So we'll call it second and goal at the one. Well, we talk about getting low. That's the key. That's who's gonna win when you get low. Watch the penetration inside. And penetration will kill you in short yardage and goal line situations. It's somewhat surprisingly, the Steelers have not had a rushing touchdown in six games. You know, they have struggled. I don't understand why when you've got a big back like what Garrett Blunt. Blunt, Ooh. Cutting, Jukin on a second and goal and brought down. What a play by Coples and really the entire defense. No place to run, no place to hide. Loss on the play of eight. Well, you've got a big offensive line and you've got a quick penetrating defensive line, and that's what gets it done there. Wilkerson, Wilkerson, he just, yes. He's going to beat Foster. And, and they the, all had a hand in it. And the back had nowhere to go. I mean, he no sooner gets the ball, Kevin, he's got someone right in his face. Three yards in the backfield. Is it four down territory? It's third and nine now. Four down? I don't think so. All right. Third and goal at the nine. Here they come again, Copels. Roethlisberger, knocked down. Right, knocked right. down by Marcus Williams. And there is no yellow. It's fourth down, they'll try for three. Richie said it just a moment ago, the secondary, Soma line coming in. They have held their ground. They've done a really nice job making it difficult on Roethlisberger, Kevin. And so much talk this week about their inability to match up, and they've done a nice job changing the shell of the secondary, mixing it up, playing some press, pre press bail, 20, rotating. 27-yard field goal by Sweetum in after missing a 23-yarder moments ago. But the Steelers had it first and goal. They settle for a field goal. NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx One Rate. Simple flat rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. Best Buy. And by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. Well, tonight, 60 Minutes goes to the Ebola Hot Zone to show how the Americans fighting the outbreak are doing. Plus, actor Steve Carell, that's tonight. Only 60 minutes on CBS. So the kickoff now coming after a 27-yard Sweezum field goal. He tries it, onside kick. He sure does. And it was grabbed on the play. And a flag is thrown. Blake, Hayward Bay were there. Hmm. Offsides, maybe? Was thrown, the flag was thrown back at the 36. I think it's, I think it's offsides, Pittsburgh. Yes, yes. Offside, kicking team, number 85. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. Hayward Bay. recovered by the kicking team. You just look up top, the offsides is going to come up top. Shweezum. Wow, it's really close. It is. You know, there have only been four successful onside kicks this year in the NFL, of which the Colts and Pat McAfee have three of the successful four. And you know the Jets talked about it, Kevin, before, after that score. It wasn't like they were surprised. It just... Those aren't birds. Those are the whistles of the officials. <laughs> they, want, they, want, they want them back out there to play. <laughs> no, it's not like it's a television timeout yeah. or anything. Well, yeah, that was a terrific goal line stand by the Jets. You know, they're so big and strong up front. We, 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 you fail to remember, there's still a top 10 run defense. 
and make it difficult for you to run in that part of the field. Well, the last time the Pittsburgh Steelers pulled off a successful onside kick, 2007. This time they'll drill it, and now they blow it again. The whistles. The ball was kicked prior to ready for play. Re-kick. We saw that last week in Seattle. Yeah, we were. We you were don't see that very often. No, you don't. The kicker usually looks downfield to the referee. The referee signals the ball into play, but he's anxious to get going. I think he's a little bummed out. He missed that kick. He still can't get that out of his mind. Well, think of that. He misses a 23. He hits a 27 right before halftime. Sweezen knocked in a career-long 53-yard field goal. There have been no touchdowns, obviously, by the Steelers. Roethlisberger's been picked off twice. Vick has thrown touchdown passes of 67 yards to Graham. Five yards to the tight end rookie, Jason Morrow. You like kickoffs, you like this segment of our broadcast. Here they go again. Curly. Smart play by Jeremy Curley. Down he goes, 12-yard return. Steelers are riding high, winning four of the last five, but mistakes today. Missed field goals and turnovers. Pretty day here in the Meadowlands. Coming up on the Subway Post Game Show, join JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cower for scores, news, and highlights. All coming up on the Subway Post Game Show from our CBS studios about eight miles from here. A lot of smiles in this place with the Jets having lost eight consecutive games, leading Pittsburgh, one of the hottest teams in pro football. In the fourth quarter, it's a first down handoff, and it goes off to Ivory, who picks up a yard. He's make it two. He's up to the 28-yard line. Well, coming into today, the Steelers, winners of three consecutive games with a win, would have had sole possession of first place in the north. But now they are trailing with uh, under seven, and the clock ticking here in the fourth in the Meadowlands. And you look at the Jets, Kevin. This is an opportunity for them, for, for them to really ice this game, to put together a long drive. They've had two three and outs in three series this half. Second down and eight. Listen. Harvin led by Harrison, but he couldn't trip him up. Now Spence has a chance at him. And they bring him down along with some help from Timmons near the 30. They pick up seven on the play. Timeouts, by the way, just to uh, get ahead of that story. Three for the Steelers, two for the Jets. James Harrison did everything right but make the tackle. I mean, that's just, it shows you the, the talent and the athleticism of a guy like Percy Harvin. Great balance, the ability to make a defender miss and still find a way to pick up a positive game. Pittsburgh just took their first timeout. Two remaining. Buckle up for this one. Saturday, the SEC on CBS brings you the best game from the best conference. Number one ranked Mississippi State visiting Tuscaloosa and playing Alabama. It all begins with college football today. Nice win for Bama down in Baton Rouge last night in OT against the Bayou Bengals. Third and one for the New York Jets. Each team with two timeouts. Harvin will be to the bottom of your screen. Ivory in the backfield. Decker on the move. Ivory. He got tripped up and fell ahead. It looks like he had the first down. I think, in fact, Timmons, who shot through, tripped him up just enough, but the yardage on the leaning forward may have gotten him the first down. He had to get just beyond the 36-yard line. They'll measure. Rich, there... You didn't get the feeling in talking to the Steelers last night. As we'll take a look at it again. Ivory. You didn't get the feeling last night that they were looking in any way, the Steelers, past this game. A 1-8 team losing eight consecutive games. Any kind of a possible letdown, especially after the great three-game homestand they had. No, and especially after what happened to them a month ago, Kevin. They, they had a winless Tampa Bay team come into Pittsburgh and beat them. So I don't think that was the case. And I think they had a good week of practice. We talked to the players and coaches. And I think the focus was good. They just they got off to a slow start. They got off to a slow start against Baltimore last week. They were able to come back. This week, 
turnovers is really what has done them in. Four turnovers. And to think over the last three games, they had averaged 41 points a game, and they've only gotten two field goals, missing one. Roethlisberger with two picks. Next week, they've got Tennessee, and they're two and six. First and ten. Connor, the lead block for Ivory. He's in the secondary, and then Timmons was there, and Mike Mitchell combining on the stop. He gets up to the 43, and he picks up eight yards. And they've done a nice job mixing it up. You look at the, the running game for the Jets today, 47 yards from Vic, 44 from Ivory, 33 from Percy Harvin. How about 23 yards from Chris Johnson? And that's really it has been the difference. We talked about controlling the clock, keeping Roethlisberger off the field. Four consecutive runs for the Jets. Two timeouts apiece, approaching five, and the clock ticking in the fourth. Connor remains the fullback, second and two. Ivory stood up by Harrison. Mitchell, and the ball, but they blew it dead, so it can bounce from here to Hoboken, but it's not going to matter. Losing one on the play, they'll be back to about the 40 two-yard line. What about Michael Vick with his two touchdown passes? One of 67, one of five yards in his second start for the Jets. It was a terrific throw to kind of get the party started to, to Graham for 67 yards. Well, he made some good decisions, Kevin. I thought he did a terrific job extending plays with his legs. And we talked at the top about how important it was going to be for Pittsburgh to set the edge and contain Michael Vick. Not an easy thing to do. It's a third and three. Harrison on Vic. And back of Powell. Coverage by Allen. It's incomplete. It's fourth and three. So Pittsburgh will get it back. And Vic again hit pretty hard on the play. This is his textbook. Harrison comes off on Vic. And of course, Will Allen right there in a position to make the play on Bilal Powell. They've got some disruptive guys on that Pittsburgh D, don't they? Much like what we've seen from a lot of Jets performers today. Very disruptive. They play hard. I mean, that's the one thing when you study this Pittsburgh defense. I mean, regardless of the score, regardless of the situation in the game, they hustle and fly around. Ryan Quigley. Poor punt. Antonio Brown was back. It'll be out somewhere near the 30. They're going to walk it off right now. And so Roethlisberger with a couple timeouts back out there, down by two touchdowns. 33-yard punt. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by M&M's. Chocolate's better with them. And by TD Ameritrade. Coming up in the Subway postgame show, join J.B., Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cower for the latest NFL scores and highlights. A lot of news, too. That's all coming up next on the Subway postgame show. Roethlisberger with a couple of timeouts. Two interceptions today. First and ten. DeCastro had a block on Muhammad. That completion to the 35-yard line with the tackle by Jared, who has a couple of picks. It's caught by Marcus Wheaton. He picks up 11. He's up to the 36-yard line. You just know that Big Ben's going to make this thing interesting. He is so good and so comfortable in these hurry-up situations. First and ten. Into the jet nickel. Wheaton again. Touchdown there by Marcus Williams. He's up to the 48. It's another first down, 12-yard pickup. They've really got to hustle. They've been, you know, they're down by two scores. It's got to be a sense of urgency, communication. Receivers got to run back after a play. Here's that no huddle you were talking about before. And they spread you out. They get an empty no back, and they let Ben go to work. Get five receivers out in the route. First and 10, Bell on the sideline in front of Williams. He's down to the 47-yard line. On a gain of five in a Jets territory. Look at that. Well, 24 passes. 24 touchdown passes. Not a single touchdown given up against the hottest quarterback in football that threw 12 coming yeah. into today's game over the last two, two weeks. Dennis Thurman. Number six defense coming in. Second down and five. Gilbert the block. 
almost picked off the receiver Wheaton had fallen I think the the ball almost picked off by Philip Adams and I'm not sure if, if Wheaton had that route mature enough I think he slips Kevin I think Ben Roethlisberger's anticipating him coming back and he just stumbles at the top of the route was he going in I think he was, was working to, back yeah. inside and Ben was anticipating him maybe going back going back outside Roethlisberger coming in and only thrown three picks through nine games today he's thrown two third and five and here comes pressure look at them all up there at the line of scrimmage they're coming all through his hands and here comes the avalanche Copels and Landry and the loss back to the 37 a loss on the play of 16 now fourth and forever it wasn't a great snap but it wasn't a horrible snap had a little bit of heat on it from Pouncey but he always wonder in that situation does a quarterback take a peek take his eyes off the ball I don't think so I think it just came I think it surprised Ben let's see if he takes his eyes off it just a split second nope oh, maybe mm. he knew the pressure was coming fourth down 21 they need the 42 of the Jets a long way to go. And they're going to heat him up again. Here comes Davis. Here comes Jarrett. There goes a wobbler. There goes the game. And Brown got the ball. Gain of five. It's the Jets ball on downs at the Pittsburgh 42. And Jaquan Jarrett has been all over the field pressuring the quarterback on this one. Yeah, really no surprise, right? Pressure across the board. Fourth down. And that's what Rex is going to do in a critical situation. He's going to bring the one extra defender that you can't block. Jared has had an unbelievable day for the Jets. They're going to have to make a first down here because they're going to have the stoppage of the clock at the two-minute warning, which is a second away. And Pittsburgh's got a couple of timeouts. So they've got a little bit of unfinished business. As they try to stop an eight-game losing streak. First and ten. Ivory, out of the block. Good tackle right there by Hayward. Loss of a yard. Back to the 43. Cameron Hayward. Two-minute warning on the clock, 155. Thursday night football now lives on NFL Network rookie sensation Sammy Watkins leads the Bills against the Dolphins. It's an AFC East clash Thursday night football, 8 o'clock Eastern time, live on NFL Network. The defense today of the Jets, two interceptions, two sacks. They stuffed the Steelers three times in the red zone, only allowing one field goal and no touchdowns allowed. Second and 11. Down goes Vic. Chased on the play by Motes, back to midfield, uh, loss of six. Oh, that's all Timeout, big. Pittsburgh, and a flag, late flag. That'll stop the clock. Uh huh. After the play on sportsmanlike conduct, offense number one, fifteen yard penalty, the down counts, third you know, down. He did this against Buffalo, Buffalo. a couple weeks ago Spiked when he ran, the ball yeah, ran seventeen yards and threw the ball and wiped out a seventeen yard gain. Now here he is with the game. Clearly in his favor, and then some of that taunting. It just threw it right. You can't have it. And it, and it, and it he threw the big seat. Yeah, he's going to get out of the morning wig, getting all over him. And he should know better. He's a, it's a veteran quarterback. We're being told they just threw a flag on Rex Ryan as well. So it's not limited to the. It's not limited to the player. I mean, look how far back they're moving the ball. Holy smokes. This is back at the 22 of the Jets. Two personal foul penalties. Rex was halfway on the field. So it's third and third and 46. Hold on now. <laughs> we hope well, we it started no. with Vic yeah. <laughs> after he decided to throw the ball at William Gay. Uh, mm. All right, third and 46. Pittsburgh at one timeout. Jets have two. Vic with Ivory, who will get the handoff. Better hold on to the football. Well, here he is. He was hit twice. 
Well, he won't go down. He was hit twice by Will Allen and finally brought down. Around his ankles, he finds Cameron Hayward. It's a gain of nine. It's fourth down. Now here we have Mitchell and Harvin discussing things. So... Let's save the timeout should, for him. Yeah, Pittsburgh should have the one timeout because there was a flag thrown right when they're going to call time, so they do have one timeout remaining. Now watch, watch Ryan here moments ago. The flag was on Vic, thrown by Terry McCauley, and then the language, which... <laughs> the look said it all from McCauley. Well, the language is a real pro you know that's something that they talked about uh, absolutely the competition committee kevin as a point of emphasis language at the officials still going i know it you can't you can't, <laughs> you can't let it go you know? <laughs> well, your team day is like well, that. here comes can't. here comes here comes pittsburgh gonna yeah come they this sure one. are yep this is uh, ryan quigley he's not had one blocked and today he's in the top five in both gross and net Coming into this afternoon in the NFL. Brown is back for the Steelers inside the 24. Quigley gets it away with nice protection. Sends off a rocket, which will go into the end zone. A touchback to the 20. With a timeout for the Steelers. 69-yard punt. Career long in terms of that. On paper. But... You want to put Roethlisberger as far back as you can because you just don't know. But now we have a minute and a half left in regulation in this game. Down by two touchdowns. And it has just not been your day on offense. No, it really hasn't. And I think it's as much about what the Jets did, Kevin, defensively. We talked about mm -hmm. the pressure on Roethlisberger and the play of the secondary. They're criticized all week. In fact, they've been criticized all season, particularly on the corners. And they have really played well. Crumbling pocket. He got away from Barnes. First and ten. He downfield. He's got the receiver, Martavis Bryant, who just smoked Adams. 80-yard touchdown pass. Look about Ben Roethlisberger's ability to avoid the rush, to get out on the perimeter, and to heave one down the field. And this is just all off the scramble. I mean, this is, just watch, this play is over right now. And now Roethlisberger continues to run, and he just throws a shot down the field. In fact, Ortavis Bryant can't believe it. And that's just a great was, job he, by the young receiver keeping the play alive. And now you see, you see Mike Tomlin talking to the special teams coordinator, Danny Smith, about what's next. Now, interestingly, those penalties we just saw in New York, they gave the Steelers the timeout. The, 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 the timeout and, and field, the field position. And field position, exactly. Here's the extra point, which makes it a 20-13 game, a difference of seven, obviously, 1-16 to go. This Martavis Bryant, the rookie from Clemson, was inactive the first six weeks. He's caught five touchdown passes the last three games and a touchdown in four consecutive games he is making an imprint yeah and it's, it's his ability to kind of get outside move around a little bit buy some extra time and give the receivers a chance to work down the field go ahead and freeze it right there now this is where he's throwing the ball he's going to heave it in the middle of the field there's no middle safety and the corner now realizes that he's in trouble and that's where speed kills simply can't keep up with the rookie Martavis Bryant. And so you've got the onside kick probably coming up. You've got a difference of seven. There is a timeout remaining for Pittsburgh. And we've gone through all the onside kick scenarios. Well, they got one earlier, Kevin, but they were off sides. Mm -hmm. Yep. Remember now, Darius Hayward Bay jumped the gun just a tad and Jets obviously have their hands team out there. They've got Percy Harvin, Eric Decker, some of the receivers, defensive backs, linebackers. Sweeves them. Outside kick. Well, that's too easy. Caught easily right there by Decker. They'll have it about the 48-yard line. 
And not a very good kick. It, it wasn't. Just no. Bounced. Bounced just a handful. It was just. You want it to bounce a couple times and then jump up in the air, and that thing went up in the air very quickly, and Too it was big. just an easy one to handle for Eric Decker. He missed a field goal earlier, by the way, of 23, and he's kicking a career long of 53 earlier in the game. Sweezum did now. Wait a second. it three times, and the game's over. Yep. Pittsburgh takes time a timeout. Out. Pittsburgh, yep. yep. Final timeout. A disappointing day for Ben Roethlisberger, Kevin. I mean, just didn't start well, and they weren't able to turn it on like they, they have done so many times this year. And the turnovers, as we talked about, you go on the road and you turn the ball over four times, you've got little or no chance of winning. And this is a Jets team that came in very inspired to do something to finally get a win. It's been, been over two months since they last had a win. And there we see some... That blood here is... The clock is still running. It is. And it continues that way. Well, he's just going to... This is a... This is a Troy Palomala move. He's just going to try and time it up. Mike Mitchell. Huh? And the Jets offensive line, they don't like that. Willie Colon, he's not at all happy. They didn't call a penalty after all that. There was no penalty. The clock, as we showed you, continued to roll. There's nothing wrong with jumping now, over a pile. Yeah. Third and 12 that? after all that. And that's it. And Rex Ryan has stopped an eight-game losing streak. The longest losing streak since 96. And that kid, a former second-round pick by Philadelphia, let go, grew up in Brooklyn, high school in the area, comes up with two interceptions. He comes up with a fumble recovery and a sack. He was terrific. The Jets win it. Beating Pittsburgh, the hottest team in the NFL, 20-13. For our statistician Pat McGrath and Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan sending you to New York.